Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at how Ladder Logic Program Scan works. PLC programs scan cyclically. This means that it is repeated many times and in the same order. The primary sequence of a PLC scan is reading the inputs, executing the program, diagnostics and communication, and updating the outputs. We will look at these scan items with particular attention on how the ladder logic program is executed. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Reading the physical PLC inputs is the first thing the scan will do. A copy of the inputs is placed in the memory table. Inputs can be push buttons, switches, proximity sensors, etc. They can be digital, on or off, or analog giving you a range of voltage or current. Inputs are usually optically isolated from the PLC CPU. This means that the only thing they share is light, which will protect them in the industrial environment. We are viewing the BRIX or BRX Do More PLC. This has inputs built into the main unit of the CPU or central processing unit. As mentioned above, the physical inputs are copied into the memory table each scan. The program will work with the memory table. All bits can be read or written in this table. This includes the inputs that have been read from the physical inputs. Ladder logic is like electrical wiring diagrams. Programs consist of rungs of ladder logic code. A rung can be made up of inputs and outputs. Inputs are on the left side of the rung and outputs are on the right side of the rung. If the input conditions are true, logic will flow from the left to the right. This will then activate or turn on the outputs for that rung. This will update the memory table. Ladder logic is solved from left to right, top to bottom. The outputs from the previous rung are available for the next rung to use. This means that the memory table is updated as each rung of ladder logic is solved, and the next rung will be able to use this modified information in the table. Let's look at an example. We are using the Do More Designer software simulator. This is a free, fully functional PLC programming and simulation software package. See the download links below. This sample program has two rungs. When X0 is turned on, the scan will read the inputs and update the memory table. It will then execute the program. The first rung will look at the content for X0 in the memory table. Since this is on, it will now look at the output and turn this output on in the memory table. The second rung is the end statement. When the scan sees this, it will stop the execution of the program and move to the next part of the scan. Remember that the scan happens several times per second. We have now added a couple more rungs to our existing program. This will demonstrate the execution of the program. The normally closed X1 input will now set the output X0 in the memory table. The status of X0 will now control the output status of Y0 in the memory table. Rung 1 is repeated as rung 3. If X0 is off and X1 is on, then the first rung will turn Y0 off. The second rung will take the opposite of the memory table normally closed. With this being on, it will set X0 to off. Y0 will then be off because X0 is off on the third rung. If X0 is off and X1 is off, then the first rung will turn at Y0 off. The second rung will take the normally closed X0, which is on, and set X0 to on. Y0 will be on because X0 is on on the third rung. The sequence of program execution is essential to understand when programming PLC logic. Features in a number of processors will depend on the model of the programmable controller that you are using. Timing of these processors with the main ladder logic scan will determine if the PLC uses a synchronous or asynchronous input and output I.O. scan. 
The PLC scans, diagnostic, and communication part are where the PLC processors can share their data with the memory table. It is synchronous if the diagnostic and communication only happens once a PLC scan. This is asynchronous if this occurs at any time and the memory table gets updated any time or multiple times during the scan. Controllers like Allen Bradley Compact Logic using the RS Logix 5000 software use asynchronous IO scan. This means that updating the IO table or IO memory table will happen whenever possible. In an asynchronous IO scan, you typically only use the actual IO reference once in your program. Most programmers of these systems will transfer the IO to an internal memory first. Then they will use this internal memory in the program code. This will act like a synchronous predictable scan PLC. Please refer to your PLC manual to determine the scanning method of your controller. PLC physical outputs are updated once per scan. The memory table for the outputs is copied to the physical outputs. This will activate your lights, relays, etc. The outputs are optically isolated from the PLC CPU unit, just like the inputs. The CPU will be protected by the optical isolation. If the outputs are destroyed by faulty wiring or surges, usually it is only the output or card that is needed to be replaced. A physically wired relay is a break before make device. When triggered, the relay will break open the first set of contacts before engaging or closing the new contacts. There is a time delay from breaking one circuit and engaging the next. Traditionally wired circuits, when replaced by a PLC, may have to change the logic slightly. Here is an example of a start-stop jog. Think of outputs or inputs in the PLC as make before break. Since the PLC scan will update the outputs once per scan, the normally open and normally closed contact will happen at the same time or simultaneously. In the post how to make a start-stop jog circuit, this is make before break demonstrated. See the links below. The last rung of ladder logic code will always overwrite anything previous in the memory table. An excellent method of troubleshooting logical errors in the PLC would be to move the rung with the output to the end of the scan. This will allow the rung to be the last to update the memory table before writing to the physical outputs. In our example, you will see that X0 will not control the output. We will move rung 1 to the bottom of the program. The errors will show that we have duplicate outputs. We will leave this as is because we are only demonstrating. X0 will still not control the output. We will now move the rung with output X0 now to the bottom of the program. Our program now works due to the scan of the programmable logic controller. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.